gaming doesn't really exist in India. It's very hard to imagine that gaming will be bigger than music, movies and uh, TV shows all put, put together. together. India's gaming industry is estimated to be worth $2.6 billion, and it's expected that it's going to grow to $8.6 billion by 2027. But despite the growth in this space, the majority of the revenue from this sector is actually coming from real money gambling companies. And this includes fantasy sports and poker games, Ludo, all of that kind of stuff. And we've all heard of Dream 11 and MPL, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these platforms that are monetizing Indians' desire to gamble. But in this video, we wanted to take a break from all of that and actually look at the gaming startups of India, the studios that are building games for mobile, of course, but also consoles and PC. India has some incredible innovative gaming startups, but unfortunately, they oftentimes fly under the radar because of all the noise and publicity generated by the gambling startups of India in the name of gaming. And so they've kind of hijacked that term here in India. But in this video, we're going to give attention to the real gaming startups of India. And the first one I want to talk about is Nodding Heads Games. So this is a Pune based startup and they actually entered the scene with the launch of an incredible game called Raji. So you can find this game on pretty much every platform, Steam and Epic Games for PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch. And this game really did take India by storm. It was an instant hit. It was described as an action adventure game that plays like a cross between Prince of Persia and Limbo by Vice. But here's the thing, Raji almost didn't happen. Back in 2017, the founders of the company started Nodding Heads Games as they tried to secure funds on Kickstarter to develop this first game, Raji, but the campaign was canceled when they failed to meet their funding goals. In fact, at one point, one of the founders of the company, Shruti, even sold her apartment so that she could fund the development of this dream game. But luckily, after chasing publishers, they managed to secure a deal with Super.com, and their dream soon became a reality. And since that point, Nodding Heads Games has really become a trailblazer and a beacon for the rest of India's gaming industry to look up to because they were the first Indian company to successfully release a premium title like Raji. Moving on to number two now on this list, we have Mumbai-based Gaming on Studio. Founded by gamer and YouTuber Nikhil Malanga in 2013, Gaming on Studios has worked on more than 150 games for clients across mobile, PC, and console. However, their upcoming game, Mumbai Gullies, which is expected to release in 2024, is creating quite a lot of buzz. And we've kind of heard in the past that Indian studios just aren't capable of creating AAA titles, but that's exactly what Gaming on Studios is attempting to do. This is going to be an open world action adventure game heavily inspired by GTA and set, of course, in the city of Mumbai. The game follows the story of a young man who rises from the slums and becomes a powerful gangster. Based on the trailer of the game, it does look very cool and promising. So far, Gaming on Studios has raised $520,000. All right, now moving on to the next entry in this list, we have a Bengaluru-based game studio, Studio Sira. Started in 2020, Studio Sira focuses on mid-core India-first games that are embedded in Indian culture and folklore. Now, to explain what a mid-core game is, it's more difficult than a Candy Crush, for example, which is hyper-casual, but it's also a little bit less challenging than something like a Souls-like. So mid-core games do require a bit of extra skill, strategy, and effort to win. And the company's flagship game, Kurukshetra Ascension, is a strategy game set in the Mahabharata epic. In Kurukshetra Ascension, players take on the role of a legendary hero and battle their way through an epic war. And the game features a unique card-based combat system that allows players to strategically deploy their units and abilities. So far, these guys have raised $3.4 million from the likes of Galari Capital and Lumikai. All right, now let's move on to the next entry in this list, Game Stacy. Founded by Danish Sinha in 2016, Game Stacy is trying to make an inclusive platform for women and LGBTQ plus gamers. So if you've played any amount of games in the past, then you'll know that Oftentimes in this industry, women in video games get objectified. This happens with game characters themselves, and it also happens in multiplayer to the point where a lot of women gamers will just turn off their mic so that nobody knows that they are a woman playing video games. Game Stacy has already received a bunch of awards and recognition for their work, including the Best Social Gaming Platform Award at Indie Game Developer Conference, and they were also selected for Google Games for the Launchpad Indie Accelerator program. Their flagship product is called Influencer. It's a social gaming platform that allows you users to share gaming experiences, build user-generated levels and digital items, and connect with other gamers. Moving on to the next company on this list, we have Born Monkey, which is an independent video game studio based in Hyderabad. Founded in 2018 by VK Summit, Born Monkey aspires to build AAA games out of India. 
The studio has developed over 25 games for their clients, which have been played by millions of gamers around the world, but their flagship game, Occult Chambers, which is yet to release, is a single player narrative game that immerses players in the Himalayas. If you can't tell by the trailer, it's a horror game exploring the darker side of Indian mythology and the scarier elements of ancient occult rituals. Now, unlike many of the startups on this list, Born Monkey is actually completely bootstrapped. However, they were able to get into the Epic Mega Grants program to secure much needed funds as they continue to look for publishers for their upcoming game. Next up, we have another Pune-based game development startup, Super Gaming. So this company was started in 2019, and so far they've launched a couple of popular games like Mask Gun and Silly Royale, which are being played by more than 85 million gamers. Now though, they're in the middle of launching their most ambitious project yet, Indus Battle Royale, which is a free-to-play Battle Royale-style game like PUBG. But unlike PUBG, Indus is an Indo-futuristic game with the Indus Valley civilization as its backdrop. The company describes this Indo-futurism as unapologetically Indian in its exploration and representation of science fiction. They started pre-registration for this game in January of 2023, and more than 5 million users have already signed up for the game in the last eight months. So far, Super Gaming has raised a total of $6.8 million from its investors. All right, moving on to the next company on this list, we have Bengaluru-based Hypernova Interactive. So Hypernova was started in 2015, and they're building India's next generation open world gangster game called Mayanagri. Now, conceptually, this game is a bit similar to what the folks over at Gameon are building with Mumbai Gullies, but the difference here is that Mumbai Gullies is primarily developed for PC, whereas Mayanagri is targeted towards mobile gamers. The game is set in a fictional city that's inspired by Mumbai and Goa, and so far, the startup has raised $1.18 million from its investors according to Traction. All right, next up, we have a one-person video game studio based out of New Delhi called Rail Studios. So this gaming startup was created in 2023 by Mukul Negi, and he single-handedly developed the first three episodes of a unique horror anthology game called Fears to Fathom Home Alone. It's a free indie psychological horror game where you play as a 14-year-old boy who's home alone for the night, and the game progresses through narration, which is presented as an online horror story. In spite of Mukul's limited resources, the game has received very positive reviews on Steam and also won the Indie Game of the Year award at India Game Developer Conference. All right, moving on to the next company on this list, we have another Bengaluru-based startup called Exigma Games. So this studio was formed in 2015 and their flagship game is the Bonfire Forsaken Lands. It's a city building survival game where players need to manage their resources and defend their settlements from monsters. And this is really incredible. The game has been played by more than 7 million gamers and was praised for its challenging and addictive gameplay. Right now, Exigma Games is working on their next project, Metal Heaven which is an upcoming sci-fi action strategy game and looks very similar to the popular real-time strategy game StarCraft. It's set in a distant future where humanity's been forced to flee Earth and colonize other planets, and players take on the role of a commander who has to build a base, train troops, and explore the galaxy in order to protect humanity from extinction. And finally, the last entry in this list is a Gurugram-based startup called Playbay Games. This indie studio was created by Nakul Verma in 2019, and he's been a professional game developer since 2014, and he he left his job in 2019 to start Playbay Games. Their debut game, In My Shadow, was inspired by the popular indie game Limbo and is set in a dark and mysterious world where shadows are alive. Players control a small creature that can create and manipulate shadows, and this game was released in 2021 and became an instant hit. It garnered multiple awards for its innovative gameplay and unique art style. Okay, so that was the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And now just a little afterward here because I want to talk about gaming and specifically India gaming, India game development. Look, I know that this industry is nascent and a lot of the companies that I mentioned in this video aren't even really companies. They're just groups of people, passionate developers who are working on projects that they care about or an individual who comes home after work and works on their video game in the evenings and on weekends. And I think that that's fine. I think that some of the biggest video game studios in the world right now started as one individual who had a dream, right? Or a small group of people that just really wanted to build an excellent video game. And so they got to work and they did it and they sold it, they made money, then they built another one, maybe they raised funds from investors. It all has to start somewhere, right? For example, right now I'm playing a game called Kingdom Come Deliverance, which was created by a company based out of Prague in Czechia called Warhorse Studios, and that's not a city or a country known for its video game development, especially when they started in 2011. They shipped the game in 2018, and it was met with incredible responses from people around the world. People love that game, truly. It's actually one of the best games I've ever played. 
and it came from a place that it shouldn't have, right? You would expect that to come from the United States or Japan or some other country that's actually known for video game development, not Czechia, right? Another example is The Witcher, The Witcher series. So that was started by CG CD Projekt Red. I've played The Witcher 1, which was their first game, and it's a little bit rough around the edges, but we've seen that studio evolve, Witcher 2, Witcher 3, and then Cyberpunk 2077. It's an incredible journey. I'm still waiting for that moment in India. I'm just... I really want to see a studio get to that level of global renown that CD Projekt Red and Warhorse Studios have been able to achieve. And this is actually the story of a lot of international video game studios. So I just want to encourage anyone watching this video who is passionate about video games or game development, you're the people who are actually going to build this industry in India. You're the future. And I know that this market is not an easy one. PC gaming and console gaming really aren't as developed as they are in other countries, but maybe you can build a game out of India for the rest of the world. Your costs are going to be lower. And with all the free tools that are available right now, you can build with Unreal Engine for absolutely free. I, I just think that it's, uh, it's a matter of time before someone builds a game out of India that blows the world's mind. And I can't wait to see that happen and make another one of these top 10 videos in a couple of years once the industry has matured. But anyways, that's enough from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.